Now, if we ask ourselves, what are we doing? It's always good to go back to definitions. Uh, we're trying to work out how we might predict trends in growth, uh, as we see with the, with the coronavirus, how we can predict trends, how we can say what might happen in the future on the, way, on the basis of what's happened already. Uh, and uh, we've just got a simple method of deciding that uh, what's relevant uh, in the past is uh, the absolute size and the relative growth. So if we suppose we take this, this table, uh, we'd look at the number for the 24th of March, uh, some almost 53,000 cases of the disease, uh, and by the end of March, uh, that had grown over three times, uh, going up to, to four times bigger. Uh, we could say, well, uh, it would be fair for us to predict that uh, since that's one week's time, uh, in another week, say by the 7th of April, uh, we could expect a, a similar jump, uh, and that uh, if you look at the at the seventh of April, you find uh, less than we expected, only about uh, only a little more than double the the size, uh, and so we could say the prediction is wrong, uh, but it would also be fair to say that uh, that's evidence of some improvement. Uh, because what a simple expectation of uh, the trend is going to keep on doing what it's been doing uh, is uh, gives us a number higher than we actually get. So that seems to be a, a sign of some improvement. And now, uh, what we're considering with these, uh, with the, the use of the compounding formula uh, is how to set a concrete number on that. And what that solves is the problem of making predictions while uh, changing our, our units and even changing the number of units. Uh, is to say that so long as we can take an equal time if we're, if we're, we assume today is the 31st of March and we look back a week and we want to, to know what's going to happen forward a week, uh, so long as we deal with, with equal times, uh, then we can easily work out the math that way by simple proportions. Uh, but uh, if we change our skin, right, so we... Uh, uh, we would like to know what happened, say, on the 10th day of April. Uh, then we'd need to calculate using compounding. Uh, and even if we wanted to know what would happen in the second week of April, the third week of April, we're keeping our unit the same. We're just, uh, we calculated what the gain was in one week, and we're going uh, two and three and more weeks forward. Uh, still, we have to compound if we want to uh, correct numbers, that the, 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 the simple increase, uh, which is uh, better uh, from the point of view of understanding, that our minds can kind of grasp what a simple increase is, uh, is worse from the point of view of flexible predictions, uh, because that, that simple extrapolation, that, that simple use of saying the past will be like the future. Uh, and that is a matter of just multiplying by a, a single fraction. That only works if we keep our, our span of time the same. We look back uh, and make an, a calculation based on data, and we look forward the, the same amount of time uh, and make uh, a prediction based on what we saw. Uh, and so the compounding... Uh, which which seems like trouble and bother and something that makes things harder to understand, uh, is necessary uh, if we want to make flexible predictions. Uh, if, uh, for instance, we gather all the data for April and we're trying to predict what will happen at various points during the coming year, uh, we're going to have to work that out with compounding. Uh, and then 
Of course, we can have the question, why, why do we bother with continual compounding? Uh, what's the right unit of compounding? What's, what's the right period for compounding? Right? With, a, with a loan, you, can, you get terms from your bank. And since it's an, an artificial calculation, there can be uh, a set answer to that. Uh, but if we've got to use compounding in order to understand the growth of the of the virus, uh, we would have to think, well, what's, what's the accurate uh, period of compounding? How often should we stop to count how much we've got already in order for, to predict uh, the future? And maybe uh, since the time of having the disease seemed to be about three weeks, we should compound every three weeks or so, or perhaps because it seems to take a week or maybe even less, five days, uh, to between getting the virus and being able to give it to somebody else, uh, maybe we should think that a, a week or a five-day period would be the, the proper compounding. Uh, and I think what we first need to understand in order to try to answer that question is, is that uh, we don't have a model. We don't really know what's going on. So the, those facts about how the virus actually works uh, are not really useful to us because we don't know how to think through all of the possibilities in order to explain uh, in in a biological way what is actually happening. And of course, there's the complication that uh, uh, things are happening all the time. So uh, someone gets the virus in, in a minute uh, and that puts that person on a different scale for being contagious and being cured. Uh, all other people. So, so again, we cannot impose a model unless we work much, much harder in order to try to understand what's going on. Uh, all that we know is that uh, there's somewhat regular growth and that it depends on many things uh, and that the, the, the events that cause growth are happening all the time. So the, the population, the, the numbers of cases uh, depends on who gets the disease, but also uh, it depends a lot on testing, and it may depend on travel. People with have it, who have it may leave. People who have it may come in. Uh, there is a whole complex set of causes that affect these numbers. Uh, so we're just trying to get uh, some accurate idea of the whole trend uh, just by counting and noting the rates of those count of that counting without going too deeply into what's actually happening under the under the surface uh, all we want to know uh, all we want to do is to be able to handle our predictions carefully again not because we expect our predictions to be accurate uh, but because we need some kind of baseline uh, in order to try to figure out whether things are getting better or getting worse. Now, as to what compounding period we ought to use, uh, we can maybe address the question this way. We, uh, we know by, by looking at, at the data that if we're going to make a number of predictions, if we're going to have any sort of flexibility, uh, then we need to compound. But what would be the, the right unit of compounding? Uh, and why would continuous compounding uh, be right for us? I mean, we, we've seen that in some way it makes the mathematics simpler, especially if you have a modern calculator which does both powers of E and natural logs, then uh, you can do the, the math with those uh, more complex calculations just as easily as, as multiplying and dividing, so that helps. Um, but I think that the, the utility of continuous compounding is... Uh, one, we don't know what the, any natural or correct period would be, uh, so we might as well just choose one and stick to that, and that will uh, cause us to make uh, fewer calculations. After all, if we decide uh, to look at uh, the data, uh, say, over a year and uh, treat it as compounding every month, then uh, if later we want to know what happens in a week, then we have to do our recalculations. Uh, and if we do our calculations by the week and then later we uh, need to calculate by the day, uh, we would have to, we'd have to recalculate the compounding. 
And the advantage of continuous compounding is that it, in effect, uh, reduces the time uh, period to the to the absolute minimum. Uh, it's uh, the rate of continuous compounding applies to to every instant, uh, and therefore, if you if you compound that, if you calculate that compounding rate once, then it may be applied to any uh, any later instance because you can. Uh, work out what it should be for longer units of time. And there's no such thing as a shorter unit of time that would cause you to uh, to recalculate it. Um, and and that may be the best way to, to think about it. So, uh, but uh, I've drawn a few diagrams that perhaps will uh, show uh, what compounding is for, and to to fix in your mind uh, why we need it, and try to help you not to forget to use it when it's relevant. Uh, 